uh, and that seems to be quite a trend when it comes to Gauteng Health. We don't necessarily get the right people uh, to respond. But uh, Professor Ashraf Kavadia, thank you for your time and I uh, want to ask you whether or not you were in that meeting yesterday with the MEC of Health and other officials to discuss that suspension of Dr. Tim and what actually happened in that room and in that conversation because his suspension was actually unacceptable and many are saying that the issue should have been dealt with and not the individual. Yeah, certainly. Um, I was in the meeting. Uh, we had uh, a very long engagement. Um, um, I think that there was a, a, an opportunity for Dr. Demaya to, to, you know, to express what he, you know, why he wrote the letter. I think that was the question. Why did he have to write the letter and go out to the press? I was also then called in and had a discussion around you know what the you know what was the the reason this had gone out and had not gone through official channels i had uh, was at pains i had explained that certainly reports were sent up so this is was kind of a last ditch effort but i think that the 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 spirit in which um it was resolved is what i appreciate because there were many positives that were taken um for, i feel from that um i felt certainly felt that the ABC listened very carefully to what Dr. DeMaio was saying and the sincerity and, and where it was coming from. You know, this is an individual out of desperation like many other healthcare workers. Healthcare workers do not get up in the morning and just write letters to the press. Nobody does that. And so I think she totally understood. I think she acknowledged that there are these real problems in the uh, healthcare system, she said it herself. Uh, the, so the veracity of what he said was never questioned. Um, I think from the Gauteng Department of Health, uh, what was discussed was the manner in which uh, the media is, uh, one engages with the media, there are policies that need to be followed. However, she did reiterate that it, the, the effect of these suspensions give the impression that the Department of Health is uh, muzzling individuals on speaking out. And this is a point we had discussed as well. And she said she did not want to affect the right of healthcare workers uh, like Dr. DeMaia and, and other healthcare workers, nurses, so on, from speaking out and raising issues. They do need to raise the issues. We certainly have a lot of work in this province, yeah. as in <laughs> across the country, in getting how those channels of communication are strengthened so that um, these issues are dealt with speedily. Uh, doctors and healthcare workers are listened to and don't feel as though they cannot go above their uh, management when management uh, is uh, failing in or appears to be failing in conveying the, the problems uh, at a local level. So I was encouraged by that and I think that, that in the spirit of that uh, there was an amicable resolution in terms of moving forward. Mm. I want to ask you, Prof, if you were aware of uh, Dr. DeMaia's suspension. Were you informed about this or did you find out like everybody else? I was not aware. Uh, I found out about it exactly the same minute he got the letter. I was with him when he got the letter, shocked and dismayed, because I felt it was in nobody's interest that he receives a suspension, least of all in the Department of Health, which I felt such a suspension brings the department into more disrepute than, than to than any you know anything else that he's purported to have done. So I was shocked, very disappointed, uh, and I'm so glad that it has been resolved as speedily as it has. Do you know who instructed for uh, Dr. Demeyer's suspension? Was it did that come from Gauteng Health? Oh, yes. See, I, I think the CEO, but wait. It's how it comes, you know, that is beyond me. I'm not, I was not involved in terms of, and that was not discussed as to where it, uh, where it comes from. Sure, fair enough. I think uh, that question is for Gauteng Health. Um, uh, Prof, let's move over to you being uh, the head and, uh, you know, being at the forefront of really understanding how the pediatrics department works. We've heard on numerous occasions about the state of Rahima Musa and how people are even too scared to put 
one foot into that hospital because of the conditions. Um, and I, I want you to be really honest with us and with South Africans about the state of that hospital and why nothing is being done. Uh, there's a part in the, in the letter by Dr. DeMaia where he speaks about how phone, mobile phone torches have to be used because of load shedding, how children are dying because of the shocking state of that hospital and how that hospital is not being considered because he specifically points out, and I hope I can get to that part of the letter, where he says, I guess your inaction and disregard for the health of children does not matter since children cannot vote, and so why would you bother to meet their needs? And I want you to be honest with us, Prof. How bad is the situation there? Well, it is. The, the situation is serious. There are challenges. The MEC uh, was also briefed on these challenges and is, and is well aware of them now. Um, and uh, around the, a lot of them are long-standing, systemic ones, such as the electricity problems. The water is a more recent one, but it is a persistent one. The supply issues of uh, procurement of items remains uh, problematic. Staffing, I think, is a critical one. Uh, if you can imagine that our hospital about 10 years ago uh, delivered about 10,000 babies uh, uh, per annum, between eight and 10,000, and now delivers uh, more than twice that number. Um, we, you know, it delivers, uh, so it was delivering 8,000, we're now delivering about 16 to 17,000. Uh, without any increase in, in budget, without any increase in size of the hospital infrastructure, uh, staffing, uh, the hospital is providing uh, tertiary services on a regional, a sort of specialized regional grant. You know, something has to give. Um, and what we're seeing are symptomatic of the problems that, uh, of the fact that this hospital has been neglected. Look, I don't think Rahima Musa is the only hospital having problems. And I need to point out that across Gauteng, there are lots of challenges. Uh, so it is serious. I wouldn't say to people, do not come to Rahima Musa. I think a lot of good work is being done on a daily basis and people are trying their very best. All our teams, the healthcare workers, doctors and nurses are doing the very best they can. However, it is of real concern to us that the, that the issues that Dr. DeMaio raised are real ones. And these hamper our efforts to provide the best services that we can. Mm. Just lastly, uh, P Professor, I want us to be honest about whether or not th you think these issues are actually going to be addressed, because this is nothing new. As you mentioned, a number of our hospitals in this province are in the worst state ever. And while we have amazing doctors and professors like yourself and Dr. DeMaia and many other doctors, uh, you know, a lot of people are not confident that this is going to be sorted out. It's going to be another letter that's going to be shoved under the mat. And because of the outcry, a suspension was lifted but a lot of the problems are going to stay the same. From your engagement yesterday with Gauteng Health, do you honestly believe that these issues are going to be addressed? So I, you know, you can't fault people for having that kind of um, sentiment because it has not been the practice of Gauteng Health to have engaged directly with uh, even heads of departments in the manner that I felt I was engaged with by the MEC. It's normally at the level of the CEO, clinical managers and doctors on the ground, including heads of department have essentially been sidelined all, in my experience all these years, which is, which is, I feel, been part of the biggest problem of how Tain Department of Health. This university has just sort of, you know, I, I don't, has, has not really been sort of sidelined in terms of being a partner. But in my engagement with the MEC yesterday, I saw rays of hope. I am hopeful. I, you know, I have to be hopeful. Um, I saw rays of hope that I believe that a memorandum of understanding between the university and the uh, province has been signed. Um, you know, staff like Dr. DeMaia and doctors across all our teaching hospitals in the province are on joint staff. So they are their governance structures is not just Gauteng Health, it is also the university. And, you know, the university, the university is a big partner. We can work together. If mm. I think that the memorandum is respected, I think if CEOs appreciate that, I think if we have CEOs across the board that appreciate that clinicians are there to help them make the, their services run and work better, and there's no them and us, we're working together. We have to work together. I have to remain hopeful. 
But I do think that uh, you are quite right in asking that question because we will forget this until there's another crisis. Mm. It doesn't have to be a crisis to bring the um, seniors at Gauteng Health to talk to clinicians. I, I don't believe we require that. But this is the optics of it. When there's a crisis of Rahima Musa, there's an MEC, there's somebody senior. When everything dies down, we, they're not seen. I mean, this is the perception and, and this is what happens. And I don't want that to be the case. I would like to have our engagement and I mean our clinicians across, not just Rahima Musa, across the province have a real, real dialogue with powers that be in Gauteng without feeling like they cannot go above a CEO. And I got that feeling strongly from the MEC that you can, you can contact, go above the CEO. I don't mean undermining people, but you can't just stop at a CEO or a manager when things are not being resolved. You can go to the head of department. You can go to the MEC. So I believe if there's a, a, a change in the, in, it's, it's not business as usual. If one good thing is going to come out of, of this entire affair is that I believe doctors have become, and healthcare workers should be emboldened in saying, no, we're not going to take this. We're not going to take this business of not being able to speak out. Mm -hmm. We have tried our channels of talking through the various uh, usual ways. We provide reports. We, we attend meetings. We, we give you our reports. And then there is still no action. Where, what recourse do we have? Mm -hmm. okay, you know, thank you. This outpouring yes. of support for Dr. Demeyer is, is a result of years of frustration, of an attitude that says, clinicians, you don't talk to the media, you don't talk to anyone, talk to us. Well, we do talk to you, but then if you don't hear us, we have no recourse. Yeah. So I think I saw in the MEC a real sense that this cannot carry on. Certainly. Okay, thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it and we thank you for the work you do. I think it's very important to highlight uh, the work that doctors do in our government hospitals because they really do work in very difficult circumstances. Thank you for your time. That was Ashraf, uh, Professor Ashraf Kovadia who is Rahima Musa's pediatrics head.